good afternoon friends let's start today about the second part of the respiratory system but before going towards that we must see what we have learned in the past video lecture let's see about the first activity that we have learned in that lecture in this activity we have blown the air from atmosphere and human mouth and observe that whether co2 is there so what is the confirmation test to know that co2 is exhaled the confirmation test is that when we exhale it into lime water the lime water turns milky okay so in both the cases when we have blown the atmospheric air through pichkari and when we have blown the air through human mouth in both the cases the clear lime water turn milky forming calcium carbonate precipitate okay then in fermentation activity also when we have provided the yeast with sucrose solution or any fruit juice solution it also produce a carbon dioxide which turn the clear lime water into milky one next we have observed how this happens the reaction behind this so clear lime water is nothing but calcium hydroxide solution caoh twice which when blown with co2 get turned into calcium carbonate precipitate along with water then we have learned about the reaction also co2 in gaseous form when combines with calcium hydroxide in aqueous form it is leading to the formation of calcium carbonate precipitate in solid form and water as a by product okay then we have discussed about how the glucose solution is used up by the cells the glucose is finally converted to pyruvate through glycolysis process which is also known as emp pathway emden mehrhoff parnas pathway and what happens with this pyruvate when it goes through tca cycle inside and mitochondria the mitochondria finally converts it into co2 and energy if it is under aerobic kind of respiration okay we have learned about this also in this reaction we have seen when in absence of oxygen pyruvate is used up it converts the final product into ethanol and carbon dioxide with energy when we lack oxygen even if we are breathing aerobic organisms when we lack oxygen due to excess exercise lactic acid is produced from this pyruvate and energy is released in presence of oxygen inside mitochondria the carbon dioxide and water is produced along with energy this thing is also we have seen yesterday we have been through this definition of respiration also so how many kinds of types of respirations are there basically three types external respiration internal respiration and cellular level of respiration we have seen this then we have seen various layers of the human body and where actually this respiratory system is situated okay the outermost layer that is skin below the skin muscles are there below the muscles skeletal layer a blood network capillaries veins are there below that the nervous system nerves are there and below that the respiratory system is there nostril pharynx larynx then uh, epiglottis trachea then bronchi and lungs are there we have seen this in the yesterday lecture how these are situated below the rib cage these respiratory system main parts lung and windpipe are situated okay we have seen this then this is the actual structure how these are fixed up inside the body anatomy then when we remove the sternum part and the rib cage part how the respiratory system parts look that we have also seen in this 3d model then we have learned about various labeling parts of the respiratory system in that sinus nose mouth tongue voice box wind pipe sinuses ribs etc etc uh, yesterday due to accident i have called this two lobes of the right lung which is actually a left lung okay so while observing the diagram don't get confused that of the diagram which lung is left and which lung is right just observe your body your right lung your body's right lung is three lobed and your body's left lung is two lobed okay so we have learned about this diagram also yesterday then we have seen when we dissect the lung after removing the rib cage how it looks so it looks like this when we dissect the right lung and remove the rib cage it looks like this inside this bronchi tree is really observable then we have learned about this 3d diagram when we remove lungs which kind of bronchial tree is formed inside this this part is also we have learned this is the bronchial expansion inside the lungs then when we remove the main wind pipe how the bronchi extend inside the lungs it is shown in this fifth diagram in the uh, final sixth diagram we have seen how the trachea extends in the form of bronchi and branching occurs then 
we have learned about alveolar structure how the alveolar appear the alveolar appear like this these appear like cauliflower structure okay these are surrounded with blood capillary network to provide oxygen to the blood rbc and take the co2 as a by product of the respiration and metabolic process towards the blood to make it allow to go to the heart to again get supplied to the body after the oxygenation of the blood okay next thing let's start the actual part 2 of this video here second kind of diagram is shown here in this diagram we have seen the nasal cavity nose hairs paranasal sinuses respiratory center pharynx esophagus left lung is two lobed your left lung is two lobed your right lung is three lobed bronchar also shown here where the heart is situated which is also shown here in between two lungs the heart is situated the right lung is three lobed even though it is uh, so, somewhat smaller as compared to the left lung and the left lung even if it is looking bigger as compared to the right lung it is having two lobes only then pleural membrane two pleural membranes are there in between the two pleural membranes fluid is filled the outer pleural membrane is towards thoracic cavity and inner pleural membrane is towards the lungs then diaphragm is also shown here intercostal muscles are shown here which bind the ribs of the rib cage pulmonary vessels are also shown here muscles attached to the diaphragm are also shown here in this diagram uh, if you want to draw this diagram or want to study further about this diagram you can pause this video and draw the diagram or take a screenshot okay next let's start from the first part details of the respiratory system the first and main part of the respiratory system is nose we also call it as nostrils okay on the nose inside part is made up of nostrils so as we can see here we observe the nose as our part of appearance also we clean the nose we wash our mouth also for good looking appearance in day to day life okay this nose contains hair and nose is continuously being secreted by a mucus okay nose secretes a kind of mucus to allow trapping of outside dust particle means to filter the dust particles and to allow the clean air to go inside the nostrils towards the lungs okay so this is nose in males and females there is not much difference in the nose structure but everybody's nose is different in shape but the basic functions of the nose remains common okay let's start about the detailing of this nose nose consists of nostrils okay these are also known as external nares so what are these external nares there are several parts of these nostrils also the first part is nasal bones second part septal cartilage which is also known as septum third part lesser alar cartilage fourth part tip of the nose which is shown in both the diagrams tip of the nose is shown in both the diagrams major alar cartilage is the fifth part nostrils or nares are the sixth part here in the second diagram lateral crust is shown and medial crust is shown the middle part of the nose which separates two nostrils okay and the septal cartilage septum is there which is attached to medial crust the next point is nasal cavity how the nasal cavity is formed and how many parts are there of the nasal cavity which is also known as nose so let's see what is it it is an organ where air enters the respiratory system which are also known as nasal nares entrance to nasal cavities mucus lined cavities are also there which moisten and warm the air according to the body temperature smell is also one of the important function of this nasal cavity or nose let's see this diagram in detail so here in this diagram you can observe various parts of the nasal cavity frontal sinuses are there superior turbinate is there middle turbinate is there inferior turbinate is there these are all turbinates okay superior middle and inferior then vestibule structure is there anterior nares are also there hard palate structure is there which is made up of bone then soft palate is also there uvula structure is there just above the pharynx structure and end of the mouth then opening of auditory tube is also shown here which comes from the ears then pharyngeal tonsil is shown here coena structure is shown here 
cellar turkica structure is shown here sphenoid sinuses are shown here and cribriform plate of ethmoid bone is shown here okay so let's go towards next point next point is pharynx which is the second and most important part of the respiratory system the pharynx is actually of three kinds nasopharynx oropharynx hypopharynx etc etc so how many kinds of pharynx are there nasopharynx oropharynx and hypopharynx nasal cavity containing pharynx is known as nasopharynx which is come up to the soft palate then after soft palate oropharynx starts then hypopharynx starts just before the end of the oropharynx okay in this nasal cavity is shown hard palate structure is shown tongue is also shown then epiglottis part is also shown where this epiglottis is situated the larynx part that is voice box we call it as voice box is also shown and trachea structure is also shown okay let's go towards the point the tube that leads air from nose to mouth is known as pharynx kind of tube okay three sections are there nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx or hypopharynx we can call it then behind nasal cavities nasopharynx is there at the back of the mouth oropharynx is there at the bottom of the throat laryngo oropharynx is there or hypopharynx we can call it then air or food share occur through this pharynx structure then let's see about larynx what is this larynx structure larynx structure is shown here in this diagram it is made up of glandes tracheals cartilages tracheux and muscle tracheal these all are combinations which commonly form trachea okay then how the bronchial principle occur how the branching of this bronchi occur how the branches of lobes occur this is explained from the larynx structure from this larynx only this all trachea structure starts and extend towards the lung let's see about next thing the larynx is having voice box kind of structure below the pharynx it is present it is made up of cartilage rings it vibrate with air to create sounds it is also known as adam's apple now let's see the next part of the respiratory system epiglottis after larynx epiglottis comes so what is this epiglottis structure it is present just below hypopharynx structure it is a flap which separates the windpipe from food pipe and stops the food from entering the lungs okay let's see the structure in detail the epiglottis structure is a cartilage flap that covers the larynx opening when swallowing food or water it directs the food to esophagus prevents them from entering the lungs okay so let's see in detail it consists of anterior commissure median glosso epiglottic fold the main epiglottis inside which vocal cords can be seen ventricular folds are also present inside this structure aryepiglottic fold is also there cuneiform cartilage structure is also there which is a part of epiglottic structure formation corniculate cartilage is also there posterior commissure is also there tracheal rings are also able to see we are able to see the tracheal rings here through the opening of the vocal cord flap inside the epiglottic structure piriform sinuses are also there on both sides of this epiglottic structure inside which just below or in between these tracheal rings glottis structure is there vellicular structure is there outside the epiglottis tubercle of epiglottis structure is there just above the vocal cords okay let's see next point trachea trachea is our next point which is windpipe extends from larynx to bronchi made of sturdy cartilage let's see the actual kind of trachea which is dissected from human body let's see you can see this cut up trachea contains rings of cartilage see these are the rings of cartilage which are cut up and you can easily observe this is the trachea next let's see bronchi or bronchial tree this is bronchi or bronchial tree shown here in this diagram so what are these bronchi or bronchial tree let's see branches of the trachea branches of the trachea means 
bronchi or bronchial tree which directs air into lung its primary function is to provide the air inhaled through nostrils towards the lung so primary first branch that leads into the lung secondary are those that branch off primary and are smaller there are 10 tertiary bronchi also let's see about the next thing the lungs lungs are appearing like this this is the real diagram real photograph of human lung so let's see what is lung lungs are large organs where gas exchange is facilitated divided up into 10 sub compartments called lobes right one is smaller due to heart right lung is three lobed left lung is two lobed let's see about parietal pleura what is this parietal pleura parietal pleura is the outer layer of the covering of the lungs and let's see next visceral pleura visceral pleura is the inner layering of the lungs let's see about pleural space the space between the parietal and visceral pleura is called as pleural space which is filled with small amount of fluid as it is shown in this diagram visceral pleura and parietal pleura are shown in between these fluid is filled which is in the presence of pleural space okay it reduces friction of the lungs with the outer organs and structure let's see different parts of the lungs now the right lung is divided into three parts your right lung is divided into three parts or three lobes your left lung is divided into two parts okay consider your body's lung structure next let's see how the right lung is divided into various different segments first upper segment of superior lobe is apical segment second segment of the superior lobe upper lobe is posterior segment third segment of the superior lobe or upper lobe is the anterior segment then in the medial middle lobe there are two segments medial vessel segment and lateral segment just at the bottom lobe in the inferior lobe bottom lobe means of the inferior lobe of the right lung there are three segments superior segment of the inferior lobe posterior basal segment of the inferior lobe and anterior basal segment of the inferior lobe so of the three lobes of right lung there are several different segments the superior lobe that is first lobe of right lung contains three segments the middle lobe contains two segments and the inferior or lower or bottom lobe contains three segments of the lung system let's see about the left lung the left lung contains superior and inferior two lobes yes the left lung of yours is of two parts or two lobes of which the upper lobe that is superior lobe is made up of four segments which are these four segments apical posterior segment anterior segment superior lingular segment inferior lingular segment and let's see about the inferior or the bottom lobe or second lobe of the left lung in this three segments are there superior basal segment lateral basal segment and anterior medial segment so let's see about the next part the diaphragm what is the importance of diaphragm when we exhale here the diaphragm goes up due to the contraction of lungs and we inhale air when we inhale air the lungs expand and the diaphragm goes down okay it is a smooth muscle engine for the respiratory system causes inspiration it is dome shaped or parachute shaped it separates thoracic and abdominal cavity flattens while on inspiration okay let's see next part primary bronchi what is the primary bronchi structure let's see this diagram when the main trachea or windpipe is branched just in the front side of the fifth thoracic vertebra of the thoracic cavity the primary bronchus forms okay this branching forms primary bronchus right and left branches of the trachea these right and left branches of the trachea are known as primary bronchus this one is also primary bronchus this one is also primary bronchus then when this primary bronchus is branched right forms secondary bronchus which directs air into the right and left lungs when the secondary bronchus further get branched right forms tertiary bronchus when the tertiary bronchus get again convert into smaller parts these smaller parts are known as bronchioles the bronchus when get smaller into smaller parts it is called as bronchioles when 
the terminal bronchial comes there the alveoli are like spherical sacs form which is a cauliflower like structure next let's say about bronchioles what are the bronchioles it is another name for tertiary bronchi okay bronchioles are nothing but another name for tertiary bronchi just like a cauliflower structure okay where the flower emerges they branch off into the different lobes of the lungs a cauliflower like structure is shown here which are bronchioles respiratory bronchiole terminal bronchiole is the respiratory bronchiole which directs air into alveolar ducts and sacs which is shown here the first number is terminal bronchiole second number is alveolar sac formation third one is alveoli okay now let's see alveolar ducts smaller tubes that branch off the bronchioles in the lungs and direct gases into or out of the alveolar sac are alveolar ducts see this is the branch of pulmonary artery which converts into arteriole and gets inside the alveolar duct to contact with alveoli see this diagram is very important to understand how the actual respiratory system works this is the main part of the respiratory system where gaseous exchange occurs cot is being thrown out of the blood and given to the lung alveolar part and from alveolar oxygen is taken and trapped inside rbc hemoglobin okay this is the main thing this is bronchiole structure this is branch of pulmonary artery terminal bronchiole is shown here respiratory bronchiole is shown here branch of pulmonary vein is shown here which get converted into capillary network of beds which surround the alveoli to take the gases means to exchange the gases co2 is exchanged in the form of o2 co2 is given up and o2 is given in the blood okay so this structure also made up of alveolar duct alveoli and it is surrounded by connective tissues to support these alveoli let's see alveoli alveolar sac alveolar sac a collection of smaller sac which is like a bunch of grapes alveolar small sac within the bunch okay this is like a bunch of grapes alveoli are like a bunch of grapes and within that bunch of grapes a single grape structure is a single alveolar sac so this is the end of the second lecture thank you for watching